Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm joined today by Dr. William Lair, who is research scientist and economist in the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory of MIT. Uh, Dr. Lair, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today. It's a real pleasure to be here. Now, perhaps we could just uh, briefly talk about uh, your, your work uh, at, at MIT and uh, what's happening in terms of computer, sciences, uh, uh, computer science and artificial uh, intelligence at the moment. Well, I'm, uh, as, as, as my introduction, as you explained my introduction, I'm an economist and uh, I sit in a laboratory at MIT of mostly engineers and computer scientists that are inventing the future. So all these sorts of buzzwords like Internet of Things and big data and um, you know, super fast networks and next generation wireless, um, all of those sorts of things at the software application device level was being done. They're, they're, building, um, in, they're building robots that can fly that are the size of insects and worrying about how do you teach those to land. Um, they're doing, uh, trying to figure out how to have low powered uh, devices that can be powered by the bones in your ear. Um, so all these sorts of things are like, wow, the future. Um, and, and so uh, one of the issues obviously that comes up is as you, you, you think about embedding all of these ICTs, um, all this key technology in our real world, um, that's, that, that requires adjustments that go way beyond the, inventment, the invention of these neat cool things. Now we've asked you to come into the studio today because ITU is preparing a study on ICT for SDGs and uh, it's actually also the 25th anniversary of the ITU development sector. Uh, the ICT landscape obviously has changed tremendously in these past decades. I wanted to ask you, how do you think that this study uh, on ICT for SDGs will contribute to responding to some of today's challenges? Well, there's a couple things about this project that I'm really excited by. First off, uh, that the ITU is involved. Um, the ITU is the only uh, international organization that is trying to coordinate uh, activity in this space. And uh, I think that the role of, of international coordination in this space is really important. I don't think there's any single institution that should have a monopoly on that or should be in control of that. But certainly one of the organizations that I think is critically important is the ITU. Um, the, as you embed these technologies in our world, you will disrupt the world. And when you embed these technologies in New York, it has ramifications all across the world. So the question about what you should do about ICTs, you know, should you adopt ICT, should you not, um, is it, it, and to minimize impact is not really an option. The, they're coming, and the question is what are you going to do about them? Um, the issues about trying to promote development goals and sustainability in particular around the world uh, is, is, is a problem that's confronting the whole planet, largely because of ICTs. ICTs have made the world a lot smaller place, so that when someone has an idea in, in, in a, a small village in Africa, um, if it's a good enough idea, you can find that idea and it can end up being manufactured, uh, researched in Finland and manufactured in China and bought and sold in um, San Francisco. Um, and uh, that kind of reduction and sort of fluidity of the world, the, the liquefying of the constraints that otherwise have controlled um, the ways in which we can, the way we use resources, uh, is, is um, the capability that ICTs bring. Um, and the problem is that um, they, when you put those in a society, they have the potential to amplify and accelerate change. Uh, and that's a good thing if the change that's happening is a good thing. Um, they also have the great potential to augment markets. They create new markets, new market opportunities. They also create new kinds of problems, things like e-waste and um, uh, so far, for example, expansion of uh, uh, inequality. Um, the, the way ICTs have been benefiting the world have been, the benefits of that have been unequally distributed. And so going forward, I think we need to uh, consider how better to marry and bring together the uh, international goals of um, uh, sustainable development with the productive use of ICTs. And I think the marrying the organization of the ITU with an international collection of academics that are thinking about this and then bringing together both the, the insights on the technology with, with development and trying to think about and talk about how these implications go way beyond 
any particular single stakeholder group, any single policy domain, any single sector um, is, is really important. And that's, you know, so there are books out there that talk about what's the right technology. Should it be LTE or fiber or whatever the flavor of the day is? And those are important. There are also books out there that are documenting um, you know, the scale of the challenges. So you know, how many people are going to school and what that problem is. Um, and are focusing on the needs of particular groups um, or particular sectors. What, is, you know, what should happen about development in the healthcare sector or what should happen in the energy sector. Um, and and though all of those things are important, and one of the things this book will do is point people to the resources uh, elsewhere, both from the ITU and you know more generally, uh, um, that that address those things. Uh, the idea is to have a fairly short book to address a really big topic, to um, bring people uh, attention to this, hopefully uh, in a new way, and that one. That, that makes the point that you know it's not an option that ICTs won't impact you, and it's not an option that ICTs won't change things. What we'd like to have happen is we'd like um, to, to, to have innovation manage that change. So take you from, you know, take you towards what the idea of the sustainable ability development goals are. And in terms of uh, the outcomes of this study, uh, and, and in specifically in it with regards to its contribu contribution to the Sustainable Development Goals, what do you think that that will be? Well, I think some of it's going to be helping to set the agenda um, in terms of what are, what are sort of the key things, and some of the recommendations are, uh, that are going to come out are going to be uh, uh, what are sort of base level things you need to do in a realistic in a realistic way. And I think part of that you can sit there, you, you can say uh, there are certain essential things you need to focus on that if you can't get those things dealt with, um, then you know, you're, not, you're not reasonably going to be able to make, take advantage of them. Um, it, you're going to make them, then the thing is there's, there are things you need to do to manage. And one of the things you need to manage is uh, y you obviously have to have the right skill sets uh, in your um, you know, in your workforce, in your communities, in your citizens. Your citizens have to be digitally aware. Your policymakers have to be digitally aware. Um, uh, the businesses have to be digitally aware to adopt the, pro the right equipment, the right processes, all those sorts of things. Um, but that's not enough. It's not awareness is is, is not enough. Uh, you also then have to actually have people use these in the right way, and that's very context uh, dependent. Um, and it's, again, it's something that you need to then think about how you're going to sustain this. So, for example, a lot of the discussion can focus on what we need to do is make sure that the right wires go to the right places or the right spectrum. That's certainly an important thing, but that's not, um, uh, uh, that, that's just sort of the first step. And in many cases, and in many countries, we've gotten well down the way in terms of getting the basic access. Uh, there. Uh, what we don't have is uh, we don't have affordable access and the capabilities and the skill sets that the people need and we don't understand what to do when people start actually using them and then how do you grow that virally across the uh, uh, an economy in the context of the global global markets. Um, and that the kind of learning and skills you need is it's not teaching someone a particular programming language. It's not anymore uh, rote learning, you need to re-engineer your education systems s for lifetime learning and skills development. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, developing countries that have benefited from, you know, ex you know, ps you know uh, developing call centers. So they outsource call centers. Uh, and one of the issues that's happened is that those call centers have now been chasing uh, cheap labor around the world. Um, so, the, so the conclusion from that is not why invest in call centers? There's no benefit because they'll be here for two years and then they'll be gone. It's no, how do I develop workers who have the ICT savvy to be in a call center? And then if the call centers leave because they're no longer the right thing to do in this country, I now have these workers with skills. What's the next set of skills that they can use to go on to the next thing? And that, that sort of lifetime learning, the changing of the skills is really important. Um, and I think you know, the, uh, also highlighting the need to um, have all segments of the policy sphere engaged so that 
um, if you want to have uh, uh, ICT based businesses be successful, they need to be operating in marketplaces where the business law and you know the labor laws for the whole economy, not you don't have ICT specific sector law um, is conducive to that. And if it isn't, then you need to understand what those limitations impose and, and, and figure out how you can work around it until you can get that fixed. Well, Dr. William, you know, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today, and we look forward to the publication of this study. Yes, well, it was certainly a pleasure. I do too.